In this video, I'm gonna be installing a 24,000 BTU mini split heat pump. And by the end of the video, it's gonna be running on 100% solar power. The air unit was purchased from Signature Solar and it's a hybrid model, so that means it runs on both AC and DC power. Signature Solar sells this mini split as a do-it-yourself kit or as a standalone unit. The kit contains the mini split and seven solar panels, which is more than enough to run this air unit on 100% solar power. They also sell all of the wires, connectors, and mounts that you may need to complete your installation. I've got links to everything that I used in the video down in the description. In a previous video, I built the ground mount system for the solar panels with parts that I purchased from my local big box store, and they are currently wired up and producing electricity. If you missed that video, I'll put a link to it right up here in the corner of the screen and also down in the description of the video. With the solar panels installed and ready to go, it's time to start installing this mini split. So the first thing I need to do is determine where I'm going to mount this indoor part of the air unit. And I think I'm gonna do that right here in this area. This is about halfway in between the left and the right side of the shop. It will give it adequate airflow and it will pretty much cover the whole shop. And the kit comes with this template. This will help me mount the bracket that will hold the unit and also show me where to drill the holes for the refrigerant lines. And right here, I'd like to point out that there is a small gap in the footage because while we were hooking up the electric lines, it started to pour down rain on us. And then when the rain stopped, it was too dark to film. So the only thing you guys missed was me hooking up the electric lines and the refrigerant lines. And the refrigerant lines were very easy to hook up. As long as you don't cross thread those fittings and you torque them down to the right specs, they're pretty hard to screw up. At the moment, I've got it running on grid power, so let's plug in those solar panels and take advantage of the solar energy that they are producing. And if we take a look at the back of the unit, you can see it has these built-in MC4 connectors, and this is where the solar panels plug directly into the air unit. 
And there's nothing between the air unit and the solar panels other than this 30 amp fuse and this disconnect box. So that means you don't have to buy anything extra to make that air unit work off of solar panels. You don't have to buy any expensive batteries, inverters, or converters. And I do want to point out that you might see some cables running across the ground throughout this video. Rest assured, by the time this video was over and I was actually editing it, I had a guy show up with a trencher and we did dig a trench and we properly buried the cables. The air unit can be controlled with the included remote control or a smartphone app. Let's start out by taking a closer look at the remote control. The remote has everything that you would expect a mini split remote to have. There is a display up at the top and this shows the current temperature setting, the fan speed, the mode that the air unit is on, heating or cooling, and a few other indications. There are several buttons on the remote control, such as to control the temperature and some quick mode buttons for the heating and the cooling. If you push one of these quick mode buttons, it will set the air unit into that mode and it will set the thermostat to a predetermined amount. There is also a power button and some buttons to control the fan. If you push the turbo button, it will set the fan into the highest speed possible, which would be great on a really hot day or a really cold day. Now, some of these buttons down here at the bottom don't do anything because this model doesn't have those features, such as the sideways blowing fan or the emergency heat. And last but not least, this light button will turn the display on the front of the unit on and off. This air unit is Wi-Fi enabled. That means that it can be controlled from a smartphone. All you gotta do is download the app for free, then scan the QR code that's on the side of the indoor unit, and then just follow the instructions on the screen. On the home screen of the app, it will show you in real time how much power is being used off the grid and off of the solar panels. And you can see right now we have got 40 watts coming in off of the grid and 620 watts coming in from the solar panels. Now right here at the bottom, this is the total amount of energy that has been saved by running this air unit off of solar. So about 25 kilowatts of energy has already been saved just by running this air unit off of solar. And you can see right here, I've got the temperature set to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and I can change that just by moving this dial, but I really like it 68 degrees out here in the shop. Now, if I move this little blue tab up, there's all of these buttons, and these are pretty much the same buttons that you would have on the remote control. But what's interesting on this blue tab is the historical electrical data. And when we look at this screen, it too shows the real-time power usage up at the top, and it also shows the total amount of power consumption that this air unit has used. Now, down here at the bottom is where the interesting data comes in. It shows a graph of how much power you use off the grid compared to how much you use off of solar. And you can see here that the grid is shown in orange and the solar power is shown in green. So in the mornings, when I first turn this air unit on, it takes a little bit more grid power to get the unit going, but you can see that in the afternoons when there's more sun and the temperature has leveled out here in the shop, it switches over to this green line, and that's indicating that the air unit is using more solar power than off of the grid. Now this can also be shown by the month and the year. So this can keep a running total of exactly how much electricity you're using off the grid versus how much electricity you're using off of solar power. And this is what the current installation looks like at the moment, and I want to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to be installing one of these line set covers that I got from Viver. They make these in different lengths, and it will cover the refrigerant lines and just clean up the appearance of the air unit. And I've got links to this down in the description of the video.
And here's what that line set looks like after it's been installed. This will seal the top up here so it'll keep the elements, the water, and the bugs out. And it just kind of gives it an overall cleaner look. All right, and if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said I was gonna run this air unit at 100% solar power. So it's time to do just that. And if you look, you can see it is actually overcast. This isn't a full sunny day. So I'm not even gonna get 100% out of my solar panels, but I have no doubt that this air unit will run on 100% solar panel. Let's head over here to the disconnect box. I've got everything set up. And if we come over here to my phone and take a look at the app, you can see I have cranked the heat up to 80 degrees, so it will pull a significant amount of power. And you can see right now, even in this overcast day, we are getting 1797 out of the solar panels and 39 watts off of the grid. So what I'm gonna do is flip the disconnect box to off. That just killed the AC running to the unit. You can see the unit is still running. And if we go back up here to the app, you can see we have jumped to 1839 off of the solar panels and zero watts off of the grid. So this air unit right now is running on 100% solar power. So now that I have achieved my goal and I have got an air unit installed out here in the shop and it runs on 100% solar power, it's time for me to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. First, I like how quiet this air unit is. I am standing about six feet away from the unit right now and it is running and I don't even think my microphone will pick up how quiet this air unit runs. Plus, I like how easy it was to install. Me and my buddy got it up and running in just a matter of one Saturday afternoon, and we had it running on grid power, and hooking up the solar panels was super easy too, because you just plug them straight into the back of the unit into those MC4 connectors, and there's no inverters, there's no batteries, there's no converters, there's no grid tie. You just plug it in, and it does everything, and it just works. Now, the first thing I don't like about the unit, it's really more my fault, but it's still the unit is doing this and it bugs me. I mounted it on the wall and it's on this back wall right here and it's right behind my chop saw where I store all of the cutoffs from all of the projects that I build and sometimes it'll hit just the right speed and some of this metal will vibrate up against the wall and it just makes this cling clang noise and it just drives me nuts. Probably what I should have done is poured a concrete pad and mounted it on the pad. That is something that I can do in the future if this continues to be a problem, but that is something to think about if you're gonna install one of these. If you're gonna mount it on the wall, mount it on the wall that doesn't have anything on it and it's not directly right behind where you're gonna be all the time. The second thing I don't like about this air unit is there's no way to store the extra electricity that those solar panels generate. For instance, once the temperature levels off in here, this air unit may only pull a couple of hundred watts off of those solar panels, and they could be generating upwards of three kilowatts. It would be nice to have some way to use that extra electricity or store it. Right now, it's just being wasted. But the main thing is, I've got an air conditioner out here in the shop, and this summer I will no longer be sweating while I'm out here making videos for you guys, and hopefully I can make some more projects. And remember, this mini split in the solar panels was a kit from Signature Solar, and if that's something you're interested in, I've got links to everything I used in today's video down in the description. Also, I have got plans for more solar projects, so if you enjoyed seeing this, I would appreciate it if you would smash that like button and leave me a comment. And let me know that you like these types of projects. And also, if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.